Hi everyone, this is Wynn. I thought I would record a video with some of the basics of the course um, and the race. I know there are a lot of people who are new followers of the race. We get new fans every year. It's one of the great things, new families, new boats coming in. And uh, for the people who maybe don't sail or haven't done the, the race before, I wanted to lay out some of, of the basics of it. Uh, this is an overview of the course. I'm using the YB uh, interface just because it uses Google Maps and it's really handy. Um, the red line that you see there, we're going to talk about a lot. It's called the RUMB, R-H-U-M-B RUMB line. And it's the most direct course that we can get from Chicago to Mackinac Island. So we'll be talking a lot about staying on the RUMB line, left of RUMB line, right of RUMB line. Uh, you know, we wish that it could be a direct line, obviously from Chicago straight up to Mackinac Island, that would be the shortest distance. One of the things that makes a race really interesting and that I want to talk about is sort of the signposts that we see along the way uh, as sailors from the water that I'm going to be talking about. We're going to be seeing pictures of from the, um, from the, the fleet uh, and so forth. So uh, let's start about the race. So we take off from Chicago, right? And our rum line course would take us to a, a point up here, point, point Betsy. We'll talk about Point Betsy in just a, a couple of minutes. And, um, you know, the first thing is uh, as you're going uh, off of Chicago, if you sort of stay along the rum line, by the time you get to maybe Kenosha, maybe a little bit even south of that, you're not going to be able to see land anymore. Um, maybe if you're lucky, you'll get catch like the Milwaukee fireworks just over the horizon at the right time. Uh, if you're there at the right time, something like that. But you're, you're away from land. If you're away from land, a very strange thing happens, and uh, you're reading about it already, and I got I to gotta start with this as the first landmark of the race. It's the biting flies of Lake Michigan. Um, you can be in the middle of the lake, 30 miles from land, the dead center of the lake. The wind dies, and you will be beset upon by flies. Uh, the racers always wonder where they come from. I'm sure there's an entom entomologist somewhere who can tell us where they come from, and, and we spend enormous amounts of energy trying to keep them off the boat, trying to kill them once they're on the boat, trying to just make our lives less miserable once they arrive. Uh, we're hearing from some of the fleet this morning, the cruisers in the middle of the lake, that the, it's really starting to get bad out there right now. But it seems like a silly first landmark, but that's <laughs> that's what you deal with uh, sometimes when the winds are light in the Mac race, and they are tough to get rid of. Uh, you know, the, the first part of the race we think of as kind of a uh, sprint across the lake. And there's a couple of landmarks that you look for as you're going along. And I'm just going to zoom in a little to, to show these, right? So you can see as this uh, sticks out here that we've got these big sandy dunes right here. This is Little Sable Point, Pentwater there. And then this is Big Sable Point with Ludington uh, to the north right here. And you see the rum line. Yeah, you know, if you're following the rum line race, you're going to end up pretty close to these points. And they're, you know, a big deal there, especially, uh, you know, if you're out here in the lake and you're looking for land and you see these dunes sticking out in the distance, it's pretty big and pretty visible. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more as we go up the lake. But anytime we have a transition from sort of this forested uh, lakefront into this sand duny lakefront, we can have big differences in the wind also. So, you know, you see situations on the race where you're stuck right here and you're completely becalmed because this is, you know, drawing a thermal in perhaps while guys two miles out out here are just flying along. So where you are in relation to these points is important and uh, something probably we'll be talking about watching for boats, see if they end up kind of in here, if they end up going faster, what, what happens if you uh, if you interact with these points. Um, so those are the first two points, but things get really exciting for you when you get up here. And this is Point Betsy. Point Betsy is kind of like you can see this little dot, the first turning point. You can go straight from Chicago to Point Betsy. After that, you gotta, you gotta, kind of gotta make a turn at some point. Point Betsy. The highlight of Point Betsy is the Point Betsy light. And I, I, this picture does not do the Point Betsy light justice. It is a massive lighthouse and um, visible for an extraordinary distance. I really can't remember off the top of my head how far, but um, if you catch this at night, uh, if you're you know fast enough to catch it Sunday night, would be the case in some races it is really something to uh, to behold the light from this thing and uh and uh really harkens back to you know when lighthouses protected and, and and noted important places but we'll be talking about point betsy and rounding point betsy and just as with uh the other points i was showing you a little sable and big sable you see we end up with different terrain here kind of along the beach uh, which makes for all kinds of interesting conditions and traps and local winds and fun stuff like that once you pass Point Betsy, you get into this area right here. This is the Manitou Passage, right? Because we have the Manitou Islands on the outside. Uh, there's a Manitou Light inside of here, and there's Sleeping Bear Dunes over here. Let's just 
These are the Manitou Islands in a cool aerial shot. And to give you an idea of the, uh, the width of the passage, you just saw it on the map. But right over here in this corner of the picture, I think we're starting to see some of the Michigan shore pop out. It's not a giant passage. And what happens a lot of times is if the wind is out of the south, you can sort of get the wind funneling through here, waves stacking up in here. It gets really quite interesting. On the other hand, uh, last year, for instance, you can also have a situation where these islands just absolutely kill the wind. So sort of there's breeze going on out here, and there's nothing going on out here. And a couple of the uh, last few light wind races I've done, I've watched boats decide to go outside the Manitou's, which is extra distance, right? You don't want to do that. Don't want to sail extra distance if you don't have to. But they had wind, whereas some people went inside of here and took, tried to take the short path, but they didn't have wind, and they got passed by the guys going around here on the outside. Uh, the most extreme thing I've ever seen is a boat one time went between the Manitou's, which is the winds really have got to be particularly just so, so and you've got to be in just a particular place for that to happen, but we don't see that happen very often. More typically, we see the uh, people passing. Uh, between the Manitou's and Sleeping Bear Dunes. Now, again, uh, I'm a little out of order south to north, maybe, but I think that's a piece of North Manitou Island sticking out where my mouse is right there to give you an idea of the width of the channel. Sleeping Bear Dunes right here, massive dune, does not do the just. I mean, look, these are fully grown pine trees uh, along the dunes here. And the smell of pine, by the way, when you approach these things is really something you remember from the race. But fully grown pine trees, okay, so let's say it's 30, 40, 50 foot tall, tall pine tree. Look how big this dune is by comparison. Um, and it's like, you know, the surface of the moon. Um, it, it, it's, it's like this barren area amongst all of this forested area, which is really fascinating. The... Um, uh, again, you know, we're going to get differential heating between the, the forested land and the sand here, and that's going to make for all kinds of interesting wind enhancements through this area. A very interesting point in the race is the Manitou Passage. So from Manitou Passage, you have about a 60-mile stretch. Uh, a lot of times if you're on the rum line, you see sort of these islands off in the distance. They don't bother your wind because they're a couple of miles away. Um, Sometimes people go around outside of these islands. That, that happens usually in races where we have lake breezes the whole way around. Um, more typically, though, you're going to be in here somewhere and uh, along the rum line, near the rum line, and you come together at Gray's Reef, Gray's Reef Light. This is Gray's Reef Light right here. It marks the entrance to a passage, uh, the Gray's Reef Passage. Um, it's a narrow channel. It can have freighters coming in in both directions while the sailboats are coming through. You just got to kind of deal with that. You go through the passage. Uh, generally, there's a bunch of other boats in the passage, too, that you're sort of, you know, watching out for as you go along. Uh, you see this light in the distance, enter the, uh, the, the channel, and depending on which way the wind is going, boy, the smell of this one sticks with you, too. I'm not going to say much more other than look at the number of birds and look at the number of the amount of bird droppings that there is on this. And uh, when you get downwind of this thing, holy cow, that's a, that's a, that's, that never leaves you. Let's, let's just say that. So you go past Gray's Reef Light, which is an incredible marker. You turn here at the Bellboy, uh, the north, uh, the, the, the Bellboy. Generally, you can see the Mackinac Bridge already from back here. But when you turn this corner and make a right-hand turn, you're headed right for the Mackinac Bridge, which uh, there's lots of great shots of the Mack Bridge, right? Um, it's pretty cool to pass under it the first, second, fourth, sixth. People told me 25th, 30th time. It's an amazing thing to do. We have to pass under one of the three center spans um, as part of it. Uh, and once we're under that center span, we're kind of in the home stretch for uh, for the finish. We make just a little bit of a left turn if we're going in a straight line and we go to the finish line. I want to just zoom in on the finish line a little bit so you can see uh, where it is. So the finish line is located between this lighthouse right here on Round Island that we're going to zoom in on here in a second, right here, the Round Island light. And then the race committee tent is going to be set up right here. Uh, on Biddle Point, and so the race committee is literally looking down a stick that they've set up with. It's got a, it's, it's, it's a pole, and a corner, one corner of this lighthouse, and looking for boats to um, to, to finish at that uh, when they cross that. So once you make it across there, then you go into the harbor, and then there's the Pink Pony, right? Pink, we all talk. Pink Pony is the place to uh, to go have a, a dark and stormy after the race, and there's lots of great friends uh, of the race on the. Um, on the island, including the Grand Hotel, and I could do a tour of just the island itself if we, if you wanted to do that. But I'm talking about the race, and so those are some of the highlights of, of the race. Um, you know, it's part one, getting across the lake. 
part two is making it through the Manitou Passage and making it up to Gray's Reef, and part three is then the dry grace from Gray's Reef all the way into the uh, to the finish line here between Round Island and Mac Island. So I hope this helps some of you, uh, especially those of you who are new to the race. Uh, please, if you have any questions or comments, contact me on Facebook or on Twitter. Take care. Bye.